one beverage for hydration, one beverage to make my brain function. I would also like a third beverage for a taste sensation. Good morning friends, welcome back to my channel. How is it going? Where shall I start today? We've got a job to do. First of all, a little sip sip. And if you've been around for a while, you know that when these bad boys come out, it can only mean one thing. And that means that some kind of chaotic, slapdash, ill thought out, terrible idea of a DIY job that I have absolutely no right to even attempt is about to begin. And that absolute light bulb, what could possibly go wrong idea is panelling our staircase. Honestly drive myself insane with the way that I get an idea in my head and I just have to do it. There's no sense of like, mm, I'll let that, um, I'll let that idea sort of bubble away a little while. I'll come up with some pros and cons, blah, blah, blah. I just have to do it. It's so annoying. And the matter was not helped when I got served the most accurate Instagram advert I think I've ever been served in my life for kits to help you do panelling in a very kind of straightforward way. I've been putting it off for ages because it just looked like something that I didn't have the skills nor the tools to even attempt. But when I got served this advert, which literally, you know, tells you how to do it and gives you everything you need, I was like, well, now I've run out of ideas of how to not do this. Now I just have to give it a go. I'll go up and show you that now after I finish my coffee and we're gonna get stuck in. Honestly, I couldn't have less idea of what I'm doing or what this is about to involve, but we're all gonna learn together. Life is a roller coaster, just gotta ride it. Shout out to Ronan Keating. Flo, this is not the level of enthusiasm that I'm gonna need from you. I'm gonna need you to pep me up. We're ready to go. No? Okay. The extra fun twist on this whole task is that Adam doesn't actually know <laughs> that I'm doing this this weekend. So hopefully, in an ideal world, the plan is that he gets home tomorrow to a beautifully panelled staircase and is absolutely delighted with the results. <laughs> Place your bets now on whether that's actually what comes true. However, he does know that I'm up to something because he saw this extremely large box get delivered the other day. Um, so this is box number one, which if I move all this padding out the way, you can see is full of pieces of cut wood and dado rail and everything you could possibly need for a foolproof, absolutely foolproof what could go wrong process. And then the other box that I've got as part of this delivery is right here. Quite heavy, I haven't actually opened this up yet to investigate what's inside. Well, 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 everything a girl could dream of and more. Look at this. The brand is called, I wonder if there's some, this is not sponsored by the way, I've paid for this myself. This is a brand called Rumix. I'd seen it on TikTok and Instagram and it just looked really appealing. I'll preface it by saying it's definitely, goes without saying, I feel, this is not the cheapest way of achieving these jobs, um, but it just means that it's as foolproof as it possibly can be. I guess if you're like me and you just have no knowledge of things like this but you still like to have a go. I think people really underestimate like how confusing and daunting stuff like this feels when you don't have anybody who's got knowledge of stuff like this or that's willing to hold your hand and teach you like step by step how to do it and fix all your mistakes when you do it wrong. Like it feels really daunting and it puts you off. The other factor of this particular job which felt like a huge hurdle as well is that we don't have a car so getting to somewhere like B&Q or Wix, any home base, anywhere like that where they'll kind of of cut your wood to size for you and all stuff like that um, <laughs> is much more of a challenge when you don't have a car. So this just seemed really ideal to me. So here is our step-by-step -step guide. How to staircase wall panelling. Here you go. Oh, I love opening it on the page. It says number 14, celebrate. Can't wait to get there later. Whack in some filler. That's the kind of instruction I'm looking for. In here we have a caulking gun. I could use this for my crow's feet these days, not gonna lie. Did decide to invest in a brand new tape measure because ours is so crooked that it might as well be a pickpocket from the Victorian era. To saw. <laughs> Oh, a venom saw. That's very dramatic, isn't it? I have never owned a saw before. I'm very excited to share this moment of my life with you and I'm so glad that I've got fresh nails to show you just how stunning this saw really is. So an extreme amount of caulk. I never know how to say that. Caulk. 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 
Macaulay Culkin. There seems to be rather a lot of this. Oh no, wait, this is something different. This is no more nails for the perfect manicure. <laughs> One coat wood primer and undercoat. Very exciting. Um, I wasn't planning on doing an undercoat. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, this is exciting. I've never had one of these before. <laughs> and considering the amount of shelving we've put up in this house, that's a slightly concerning thing to admit. Heavy duty extrusion for maximum stability. Rock on, my dudes. I couldn't tell you for the life of me what I'm going to be doing with this, but I suspect it's some kind of soaring to an angle contraption. This is the meaning of the word contraption. It's not very often you get to use that word in this day and age. I would indeed call this a contraption. An angle finder for all the angles you could ever wish to find. And what's in this little box? Get the I did that feeling. That is what I'm constantly chasing. Wait, why is this actually kind of cute? This feels like one of those beauty subscription boxes. <gasps> Wait, what? Oh my goodness! Wait, why is this the cutest thing I've ever seen? It even comes with a chocolate bar. A Tony's chuckle only, no less. Now that I've seen all of the things that this actually requires, um, starting to feel like maybe I've underestimated <laughs> what kind of job this is. <laughs> me underestimate a DIY job? That doesn't sound like me at all. Excuse me for one moment, Taylor. I'm sure she'd be absolutely delighted that her new album is the soundtrack to my stair paneling. Endeavor. I realized I need to do the most important thing first, which is the before photos. <laughs> so I've taken a couple of photos and I'm going to quickly do a little clip to show you. So you've seen these stairs more than any human should see anybody else's stairs. Um, but here they are, still looking nice. These walls are very blank and very high. So I just feel like a little bit of definition and texture and a little bit of something something might be a good move here. I've already done step one, so we're off to a great start. Prep your wood glue and caulk gun. One moment, please. Bella, bella, da, 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 da. Um, here we go. Here's one I made earlier. Uh, did I have to watch a YouTube video about to do this? <laughs> yes, I did. Next step is actually step one. And as you can see, start with the dado rail. Um, which I thought was a word and a thing that we'd left in like 1995, but it would seem that dado rails are back with a vengeance. Measure the distance you'd like the dado from the top of the skirting board and mark with a pencil. Haven't really thought about this. How does one know where they want to put their dado? <laughs> Pardon? How high should a dado rail be? Traditionally, around 900 millimeters up from the floor. So I'm wondering whether, hang on. I know, I know what I'm missing here. There we go. Now I know what I'm doing. There. Looks about right to me. <laughs> Who knows? Promise I will measure this to the best of my abilities, although my history of measuring things for this house is not a strong one. Well, things took a turn. Good morning, friends. Um, it is unexpectedly three days since I last picked up this camera. Um, if there is anything I didn't factor into this whole project timeline um, of being a cute little weekend project to surprise Adam with, um, the thing I didn't factor into that potential timeline was food poisoning. <laughs> if anything's gonna scupper your DIY plans, uh, it's a severe case of food poisoning and I was struck down by what was either incredibly severe food poisoning or a hugely successful exorcism. 36 hours later, I am finally feeling a lot better. So let me show you where I got up to before everything went slightly awry. I also have to ignore this hairstyle that's going on because I just wanted my hair out of my face this morning. Um, do you know what? I feel like I've made a semi-decent start. The main issue that I found that I ran into was that our walls are by no means flat. If I knock the brightness up a little bit, it might be a bit easier. Okay, so here's where we're at so far. So the first thing that I did was actually super straightforward. I decided that the boards down here probably needed a little trim on them, otherwise they were gonna look a bit flat and boring compared to the rest. So I added some of the molding onto the top of here. They look really kind of neat and good actually, I'm really pleased with those. Um, and the other bit I got round to was this first 
this first bit of dado rail. Is there a little bit of bend going on at certain angles? Um, there might be, who's to say? But it turns out we actually have very wonky walls, um, so this is a tricky project. <laughs> Trickier than I expected. You'll hopefully be able to see that I have actually mapped out the entire thing in pencil, ready to follow. So these are the lines that I'm gonna be following for the molding. I could easily just pretend that it was very simple and straightforward to get to this point, um, but I am actually embarrassed to admit how long it took me to figure out the measurements and the angles um, that I needed to draw up on those walls. I like to push my brain creatively, but in terms of things like sums and numbers and angles and uh, like lines being parallel, I haven't done anything like that since maybe GCSEs. <laughs> Um, and it was a shock to the system. So your guess is as good as mine, really, whether this is actually gonna translate into something successful. I guess there's only one way to find out. up 90 centimeters from the top here because apparently that's like the average height to go for so this line here is the 90 centimeter line that's going to be where the bottom of the dado rail sits and then i decided to just keep it super simple and did a 10 centimeter gap from here 10 centimeter gap from here and then a 10 centimeter gap up from top of the trim here um so once you kind of map that all out the box is kind of just join themselves up really, as you can see. Might have had a few measurement attempts here. <laughs> Turns out my measuring skills are not something I'll be putting on my CV anytime soon. Uh, but then there's another 10 centimeter gap and then the next box starts. So the measurements themselves are pretty simple. I think anyway, once these are put onto the walls because they are a little bit wibbly wobbly, they'll look a little bit wibbly wobbly. Um, <laughs> and I'm just gonna roll with it adds character. Whenever anything goes wrong in life, it adds character, it adds to the plot. Something that I would say which did actually make it a little bit easier was having something that was actually 10 centimeters wide. Um, you could like cut off an accurate amount of wood to use as a little kind of guide to just trace along. I actually used a coaster. I'm just a very resourceful kind of girly. So I had a coaster which I <laughs> used to mark out my 10 centimeters. So I've now got my bottom and my top levels sorted uh, successfully semi-successfully there's a few gaps which may need to dress in. This is really where the angles and the precision come into play. Neither of which are things I would consider to be my strongest suit of all time. Um, I'm more of a wing and a prayer kind of girl. I'll let you in onto a little secret here. This side of the wall I have actually finished now. I absolutely barreled through it because I was so determined to feel some kind of success because I was yet to feel any. I was mostly just feeling frustration to be honest because it is no exaggeration to say that every single angle that I have cut has had something wrong with it. I haven't had a single satisfying corner to corner perfect fit. Uh, not a single one. Not a single one. So I really wanted to just keep at it, keep practicing. Um, and the final result, now that I've got all three boxes up the wall in where they're supposed to be, they do actually look really good. So I have made many, many mistakes. And as a result, I have actually rattled through the wood much quicker than I should have done. Um, obviously, A, because I've added these in, which aren't really like a, a necessity because we just had very plain, boring skirting boards up these stairs and I thought they'd look a bit weird. Um, but because I've made quite a lot of mistakes. <laughs> so I think I probably am going to have to order some extra wood, which is a bit of a pain. So I did just get my head down and rattle through this side. Um, and I'm pretty pleased with how it's looking eventually finally oh my god i cannot just i cannot tell you how many mistakes i made it was quite unbelievable at times i was literally just sitting on these stairs like how have i done this again there was a point where i cut the same like left hand side piece four times and every single time i'd done it wrong most of the time it the exact same mistake over and over despite convincing myself that this time i was doing it right it was very bizarre and confirmation that my brain is melting so the bit of kit that i've been using for this is this jazzy little thing which is a digital angle finder 
Not something I am familiar with, not something I've ever even acknowledged in existence before. So here is like one of the corners, this will be one of the corners of one of the panels um, and you basically you set your angle finder to zero. That's your angle but you don't cut your wood at that angle, you cut it in half because obviously there's going to be two pieces of wood that are meeting at that angle. So you take that number, you slice it in half and that's the angle that you cut your wood at. The next most important thing is uh, acknowledging which direction you need to cut the wood in because that's where I <laughs> that's where I have been falling and falling and falling. Obviously you have to consider the direction of the angle whether it's going to go da da or da da um, but you also have to obviously have to take into consideration like which side is the thin bit and which side is the thick bit because you want this to be the inside of the box and this to be the outer of the box honestly uh, it turns out I found my Achilles heel in life. Anyway, I'm going to crack on with this box <laughs> and really show you how it's done, you know, learn from a pro. You would think by now, having completed three boxes of panelling, that I would be good at this. You would be, you would be very misled. You'd be very misled. So this top one here came out at 132.3 degrees. So that is 66 point one five degrees she can do math so that is 48.5 so we're looking at 24.25 degrees baby we're soaring flying it's going down i'm yelling timber Time for a little update i think i have made really good progress uh, but i've had to kind of put the vlogging camera to one side for a little bit while i kind of cracked on with it all there is also a cat tail just floating around the vicinity it's actually been pretty straightforward in terms of like step-by-step -step instructions and the actual like practicality of doing this has actually been really straightforward if it wasn't for the fact that my brain had struggled quite a lot with the angles and the bit that I've done on a flat wall right next to the front door um, where the angles were simply 45 degrees or 90 degrees only um, was super easy and straightforward. So if you're thinking about doing this on just like a normal wall, maybe like a bedroom or something like that, um, I'd absolutely say that pretty much anyone could do this, I think. If I can do this, honestly, anyone can do it. I've popped some pins in where I needed to, where it wasn't sitting flush to the wall, so they're all fastened on nice and neatly. I then went in and did wood filler to fill in quite a lot of gaps. I then did the caulking, um, which is basically just kind of like neaten everything off with this like white sticky webbing stuff and you kind of fill in the gaps and neaten it all up on the edges. And I, yesterday, finally finished the sanding, which was quite a big, tricksy little intricate job because of all the little bumps and shapes on the molding look at that now i don't mean to i don't mean to show off i don't mean to start bragging here but from certain particular angles if you squint a bit and maybe turn the lights off it looks at least 10 percent straight and only ever so slightly very wonky if you really give it the benefit of the doubt. And I'm pretty pleased with it, to be honest. I'm also actually really pleased with how this banister is sitting. I didn't know whether it was gonna look a bit weird with the banister attached, but I actually quite like the way it sits inside the panels. I think it looks quite nice and neat. So as you can see, we've got three boxes on each side, uh, kind of mirrored. I had to like tweak the measurements a bit for this one. So these aren't actually the exact same size as these. And that is because the walls are, turns out they're slightly different lengths and sizes. Who would have known? But I thought it would make more sense for the panels to like end in the same spot rather than keep the measurements the same and be kind of like not quite opposite each other, if that makes any sense. I'm hoping that's the tricky bit out of the way. Oh, and let me swing you around here. So just on the other side by the front door here, I also decided to do this bit. This is where we kind of hang bags and coats and stuff. So I decided to do these little matching bits here as well. These were a uh, doddle in comparison. Um, so they look quite nice and neat too. I'm really pleased with those. So the next thing on the list, which I'm going to get done today, I guess it'll probably take at least a few hours drying. So this might be the only bit that I do today. I think it is officially time to dive in with the primer coat of the paint. Then I have to make the decision of what color paint to use, but we'll talk about that later. I've just kept everything I've needed in the living room, just by the window here. Um, but I am going to need a paintbrush. There it is. And 
this stuff. I've got two tins of it, but there's no way I'm gonna need two, I don't think. When I said I finished the sanding yesterday as well, what I did not decide to feature in the vlog, what what is not pictured for the audience to witness for themselves, is me basically carving out the pattern of the molding with a kitchen knife, uh, thanks to the sheer amount of wood filler that I decided to slap on in between the pieces of wood, not really realizing uh, that wood filler dries down to a very solid form uh, and it was just very lumpy and bumpy and every single corner of every single box that I've crafted here was just shoved full of wood filler so I literally had to re-carve out the shape with a kitchen knife. I only stabbed myself once, no major injuries so I'm gonna call that a success. Just using this one here for example, um, quite a large lump of wood filler was placed over this, not really thinking what it dries to. So I basically had to use the kitchen knife to, to re-carve the shape in. Still looking a bit shiny because it's drying down, but primer coat is all done. Um, now that it's actually all in one colour, I actually feel like it looks pretty good. I'm kind of like mildly impressed with myself. I'm as surprised as you are. I mean, that to me, to the untrained eye at least, I'm sure carpenters or joiners would look at this and be like, oh dear lord above. But to the untrained eye, it doesn't look half bad. <laughs> I wanted to sit myself in front of a window though because this has just landed through the letterbox. Perfect timing. Um, I've just finished doing the undercoat of primer and these are some paint samples. Here they are next to each other to show you how they actually do differentiate in shades when they're next to each other. So I pop these little paint sample stickers up um, and I'm just gonna leave them there. Tonight, tomorrow, I'm gonna give it some time so that I'm not like rushing into any decisions. Um, I just know that Adam is gonna look at these and be like, I have no idea. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave these for a while. I'm gonna keep going past them. I'm gonna go up and down the stairs, figure out which ones feel right, which one feels wrong. Um, and we'll go from there, I guess. At the moment, really into this, but we'll see. Yes, this is a slight change of vibe. The hair is considerably larger since the last time you saw it. I haven't made an effort today in celebration of my new panelling, although I probably should have done. It kind of deserves it. Um, I'm going out for a friend's birthday after this. <laughs> that is not the transformation I have come here to talk to you about today. I've come here to show you the final result. So I think the last time I picked up the camera, I was still, we were still in the pink phase. I was pretty much convinced that I was gonna paint from the dado rail downwards some kind of shade of pink. I really thought pink was the way to go. I actually got another little sample here that we were considering. This is Sulking Room Pink from Faro and Ball. Um, and I've seen a lot of this online and I really love the way it looks. And I thought that was the direction we were gonna go in. But in classic me style, after umming and ahhing and overthinking it to death, I actually took a dramatic left turn. I think there were two main reasons for that in the end. Number one, was because of the kind of like orangey terracotta-y colour tiles that we have on the floor. Because I was looking at quite like dull pinks and kind of beigey pinks and quite calm grown-up pinks, felt like it was going to look a little bit too similar to the tone of the floor tiles. So that put me off a bit. And the other project that we've got just kind of starting to come together at the moment is we're going for some like new alcove shelving and cupboards in the living room. And I think I want those to be pink. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna actually save that color to use in the living room later down the line. And I didn't want it to be like pink, pink, pink. Well, I mean, I kind of do, Barbie Dreamhouse style. So pink got put on the back burner and Adam actually suggested, what about a nice green? And I thought, do you know what? A nice green sounds like a good idea. <laughs> there was already a shade of green that I had saved in my Instagram bookmarks that I like the look of. We picked up a little sample pot of it from Fire and Ball, which is not a paint that I've ever used before. And I had no idea how crazy expensive it was. Um, it's come out beautifully and it was really lovely paint to work with, but it's, it's very pricey. I don't really understand why. I've since learned that what people seem to do is take a Fire and Ball color and get it color matched from a more affordable brand. So in the future, we'll be doing that. But actually it wasn't too bad because I was only painting from the dado rail down, didn't actually need very much paint. So I got away with only buying one very small tin of paint for this job anyway. So it really wasn't the end of the world. So that is how the color choice took a bit of a turn. 
I guess I'll finish rambling and uh, we'll just go and have a look at it, shall we? And I'll do the grand reveal for you. Let's do this. I think it was a really good decision for the space and I kind of wish we'd done it a really long time ago, to be honest. Um, so without further ado, and in three, two, one. Here we have it. This is the final result of my DIY panelling attempt. <laughs> and I'm hoping you agree. It's not too shabby. <laughs> it's not too shabby. I'm kind of obsessed with the colour that we chose. I think it looks really nice against the wood of the stairs. I feel like it's made them kind of really pop and look a lot richer. I don't know if I've even said what this green is actually. It's called Card Room Green from Faro and Ball, but I'm sure you could get some really good colour matches. As we've kind of gone around this house and decorated it, I had a real thing about the fact that I needed to use light colours at all times because it's not like a, a naturally a super bright house and particularly the staircase like as you can see it's it doesn't get a lot of light it only gets really bright light at certain times of the day and I had I've developed like a real thing that I just had to go as bright as possible at all times when it comes to colours in this house and as a result of that we've basically just gone for white on everything but it's actually really taught me that sometimes you kind of have to like embrace the dark spaces a little bit more and almost kind of emphasize them and really go for it and actually putting a darker color into a dark space is actually like quite a nice thing to do it almost kind of makes it a bit more purposeful and seems like there's a little bit more intent behind the color choice rather than just oh let's try and brighten it up as much as we possibly can you know there's only so much you can do and i think actually picking a slightly darker color and going for a little bit of a sheen on it to kind of bounce the light around a bit actually looks much nicer than just slapping white on at all times and if i just spin you around here to show you these little bits by the front door too because we have this like really soft pink on the back of the front door i actually think they look really cute next to each other these colors so for me and my surprisingly successfully paneled staircase <laughs> thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it if you've been thinking about giving it a go for yourself then i hope it's given you a kick up the bum to give it a try because honestly i think i said it before but if i can do this no joke anyone could do this uh i had zero skills zero knowledge and zero tools when i went into this <laughs> and it still turned out okay so here's my little shove to you in the right direction to give it a try but thank you so much for watching i hope you're doing really well don't forget you can follow me over on instagram uh if you would like more up-to-date updates whenever i decide to do something impromptu and unwise such as this i think that is all from me today so i will see you very soon with another video. 